Are you serious? Are you serious? Syria, are you serious? Assad there in Syria attacking the United States ambassador to Syria. A guy named Robert Ford was attacked. He was attacked. Now, well, just hang on a second, okay? Yes. Yes. It is always better to drink out of an Are You Serious Jesus Saves coffee cup. Now, let me just say this to you right now. This, we've been talking about these countries in Daniel, chapter 11, verses 41 through 45. I've been sharing with you several times. The Bible kept telling us that there is an antichrist spirit rising up in the land that's going to overtake the glorious land, it says in Daniel, overtake the Middle East area, consolidating, in what I believe, eventually pulling all the uh, nations that surround Israel basically into a one state. In other words, a Muslim nation, if you will. And Israel being a Jewish nation, right there in the middle of it. Of course, Jacob and Esau were brothers, and they had a disagreement when it came to the birthright, because Esau sold his birthright for that bowl of soup, that bowl of portage. And, and, and what happened? Jacob ended up getting the birthright. And this has been going on, this, this conflict over the land of Canaan, this, this conflict over the Mount Moriah. When, Ab when Abraham offered Isaac on an altar to God, he didn't kill him. He just was willing to offer him if it was required. Of course, God doesn't require human sacrifice. And, and, um, but God was just testing the faith of Abraham. That happened on Mount Moriah, the very mountain that eventually King Solomon, the son of David, built the great temple of the Lord, which was then tore down and rebuilt again by King Herod and tore down again in 70 A.D. Now we understand that the prophet Muhammad did not arrive on the scene to approximately 600 A.D., bringing a different message. And it's believed by millions and millions of Muslims around the world that Muhammad actually ascended into heaven on a white horse there off the Mount Moriah. That is why the Dome of the Rock Church is sitting there right now and is the third most holy site among the Muslim people. It's the exact same temple mount that Abraham was willing to offer Isaac, and it's the exact same temple mount that Solomon built the temple of the Lord where the uh, Ark of the Covenant resided inside the Holy of Holies. And it's just on that same ridge at Mount Calvary where Jesus was crucified and gave his life, the Son of God, for the sins of the whole world. So you have Jews, Christians, and Muslims converging on one spot. And now, as we come to this apocalyptic time of, of the creation, as we come to the end of the age, as we come to the moment when the world is hinging on its triple of three face, it's only one God, Jehovah, who ultimately wrote in his word through the hands of his prophets, the prophecies, the ancient prophecies of things that will come to pass. Now we said, I said all that to read this scripture to you found in Psalms verse 83. And then we're going to go to the Syria scripture in Isaiah 17. But let's read it. Psalms 83 says this. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a turmoil. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people. And consulted together against your hidden ones or sheltered ones. They have said, come. Let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They have formed a confederacy against you. This is the plan. This is the conspiracy. This is the confederacy. They have come together to come against Israel. It's called an intifada, and it was declared on Israel this year by 
the nation of Lebanon, Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. And then the surrounding Muslim monarchies who would also love to participate would be Syria, Libya, and uh, some of the others, and I couldn't, well, just about all of them. So here's, here's the deal. What's happened? The Bible said that there would be, the, 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 uh, this Antichrist spirit would rise and said that many nations would be overthrown. You can find that in Daniel chapter 11, 41 through 45. Many nations would be overthrown, including Egypt, and they have, it's fallen. You can read about that prophecy and what's called the burden of Egypt. It's Isaiah 19, verses 1 through 4. It's right down the line, perfect, what happened. Egypt, it says in Daniel eleven forty one 41 through 45, Egypt would fall, Libya would fall, and we've just seen that. i just seen where Muammar Gaddafi's family is now in Algeria. As a matter of fact, one of his uh, daughters, I believe it's his daughter, had a, had a baby yesterday, another grandchild from Muammar Gaddafi. And now he has lost... Uh, one son was killed, uh, maybe two. I know he's got three grandkids were killed here in the last few months. And and the outrage and the, and the battle that goes on and the massacring and the murdering that he's done there in Tripoli and in Libya. But he, nobody can find Muammar Gaddafi right now, but we know that his empire has crumbled. Now, the Bible said Egypt would fall, it did. Libya would fall, it did. And Ethiopia, he would be at its steps. Well, seven different regions of Ethiopia are being devoured by swarms of locusts. There's a drought that has hit the land, a famine so severe that starvation and disease is rampant. Ethiopia is literally consumed, but it is believed that, and as Ethiopia themselves say, that the Ark of the Covenant is inside a small temple in Ethiopia. And all through the Bible, if the Ark of the Covenant was ever removed from Jerusalem, wherever it went, the people who had it would be plagued. The Philistines did, and after 20 years, returned it. Here's what happened. The United States, President Barack Obama, has said that the president of Syria must go, Assad, because of his murdering, because of his tyrancy. Because his father for 30 some years and for Assad for 11 have been abusive and uh, oppressive upon the people. So Obama says Assad must go. Hillary Rodham Clinton has stood behind the podium several times and said Assad must go. They said the same thing about Gaddafi and Gaddafi went. They said the same thing about Mubarak and Mubarak went. They're saying the same thing now about Assad. And what happened? Let me read to you from the Bible. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, the scripture says, The burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. That's the prophet Isaiah, the ancient prophet, 3,000 years ago, prophesying a, a, the destruction of the city Damascus. This has never happened. This scripture has never been fulfilled. But as we speak, the people are rising up against President Assad, and as he's murdering and shooting them in the head and turning the stadium into a prison and rounding up the people and thousands are missing and being killed, his kingdom is falling, and now our ambassador, Robert Ford, was attacked in the street. A man ran up to him, tried to wrap him in a flag, and they had to push Robert Ford into a car and get him out of there. Chance we're coming against America. Chance against the ambassador. Is this the tipping point? I was asked that question by Stephen of Oklahoma today. Is this the tipping point? When the assault starts to come up on the very diplomats that America has, will this tip the hand of President Barack Obama? Will he launch an assault upon Syria? Will he use NATO to bring an end to the empire of Assad. And will Damascus, this is the very city it happened to, will Damascus, the prophecies of it, be fulfilled in the days to come? We know it's going to be fulfilled. The question is, are we living in those days right now? We need to pray for the people of Syria. We need to pray for the peace of the Middle East. We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved today in Jesus' name.